What kind of faith do we have? Is your faith and my faith in God? Or is our faith in the world? Not all faith are created equal. Some people say, and we do hear them say, I have faith. Or, sasabihin nila, tiwala lang. Right? You've heard that many times from our friends or even our Christian friends, uh, Christian circles. Yet, not all faith are created equal. What does the Bible say about our Christian faith? Is it different from the faith in the world? What does the Bible say? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Friday morning devotion and prayer. First, may I ask, may I request everyone to please share this video to as many people as possible. Many people are in need of God's Word, and we believe that God's Word is life. God's Word is life itself, and we can bless others as we share God's Word to them. Another thing is that if you have any prayer requests, please do put it in the chat box down below because we do check it. I personally check every after the devotion or within the day and check all your messages and pray with you if you have your prayer requests there. Now let us begin. Our devotion for this Friday morning will come from the book of 1 Peter in chapter 1 and we begin reading from verses 3 down to 9. So that's 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 9 and let us read together. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. And even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hallelujah. Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Friday morning. Lord, we put our hope and trust in you. Because Lord, though times are difficult, life is really uh, so much pain as we go through it and there's so much trouble and trials that some of us are going through and this has been bringing us down even some is going into depression lord we put our faith in you and our faith in you is not placed in an empty chair or an empty box where it can fall and it can be destroyed but our faith is on someone 
who is guaranteed to give us what He has promised because you are faithful to your word. We thank you so much for this wonderful time of prayer and devotion. And I pray for those who are listening that you touch our hearts with your Holy Spirit that we may understand and we may receive from you this morning. We love you and give you praise and glory in the sweet and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen and amen. And so let us go back to the question in the beginning. Is your faith and my faith in God or of the world or in the world? Now, that's why many of us have heard, Tiwala lang or have faith and God will provide you. And sometimes we wonder, is it as easy as having faith and then we receive? Yet the Bible the Apostle Paul clearly says, clearly speaks about the purpose of our faith. And this purpose of our faith is in God. And I will share with you and we will, we will study what this passage actually is talking about. My, my title for this devotion uh, this morning is Faith in God or Faith in in the world faith in god or faith in the world hallelujah and so peter here was addressing the churches or the the, the churches in the roman provinces and this is the, these roman provinces have been uh, mentioned here in the first few verses and included pontus galatia cappadocia asia Bithynia, and these are actually parts of Turkey already. These are uh, um, uh, areas in uh, present-day Turkey. And the reason why uh, the Apostle Peter wrote this to the Gentile believers in these Roman uh, provinces was because it, may, it might have seemed that because of a lot of trials and, and troubles that the, these Christian Gentiles are going through, they have been discouraged. And uh, the Apostle Paul wrote this with the help of Silas and addressed them to encourage the believers, the Gentile believers in these churches. And he begins this way. He says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is in verse 3. And why do we have to praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ? It says here, in His great mercy, He has given us new birth, being born again. He has given us a new life, the promise that Jesus actually gave and uh, actually talked about when he was, he, he was talking to Nicodemus in a, in a secret meeting. Amen? And so he said, In the Father's great mercy, He has given us new birth into a what? A living hope. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let me stop there. Many people continue to hope today. Some have lost hope. Yet a lot of people still have hope and praise God for that. Yet the Bible speaks here, of the Apostle Peter speaks about a living hope because some hope in the government, some hope in their job or in their business, and these things fail. It will fail you at one point in time. Yet this hope that we have in God is through Jesus Christ, is a living hope. And why is it a living hope? It is because our living hope is through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus Christ, when He died on the cross and for three days remained dead, yet He did not remain dead forever. 
And because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, that is exactly the, the same hope that we have. That though our bodies may perish or may die on this earth, we will live on forever in Him. Praise God. And that is why our hope is always a living one. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says there in verse 4, what, what, is this, what is this living hope that we have? It says there that this living hope is going into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Now, in this passage from 3 to 9, we will note, we will note that the focus of this living hope is actually or this inheritance is actually our salvation our life forever in god so let's let's study through that and you will notice these words um, it will be different terms but it will be the same meaning our living hope is because we have life in christ forever hallelujah so let's go on it says there um, into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. What is this? It is kept in heaven for you. It is kept in heaven for us. Now think about what is kept in heaven for us. It is salvation. Yes, it is salvation for us who, through our faith, through our faith, are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Now, this inheritance is the salvation that God has stored for us in heaven and will be given to us because of our faith in God. God has now reserved or, or kept secure this salvation for us and will be given to us or revealed to us in the last time and of course the last time is the second coming of jesus christ amen hallelujah that is that is the wonderful thing and that's the reason why even though we struggle in life we continue living faithfully uh following jesus and so in verse 6 it says in this what what's this in this hope of the salvation that is kept for us until um up to the end of time, no? uh, kept for us uh, until that end of time comes. So in this, we greatly rejoice. You greatly rejoice, though now. Now this is this is what really needs uh, what we what we really need. If you're going through a lot of difficulty today, if you're going through a lot of trials, a lot of questions, a lot of struggles in your life, you don't know what to do. You don't. You, you're kind of lost. This is for you and I. This is for you and I. It says there, in this salvation you greatly rejoice, or hope of salvation you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you and I may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Lord, wag naman. Ayoko naman ng sufferings and trials. Yet, you see, the Apostle Paul clearly says that this hope of salvation that we have in heaven uh, kept for us uh, and will be given to us and revealed to us in the last days, um, it's still there and that's the reason why even we go through struggles and trials and, and a lot of troubles, okay, um, we are hopeful. Now, sino ba naman ang may gusto ng troubles or trials or grief? I don't. I, I, and I definitely don't like grief. It's like, Lord, wag naman, pahirapan pa buhay. Lord, wag naman. And, but yet, many of the Christians, especially, you know, those who might have been misled by prosperity teaching, they feel or they think now differently that when you receive Christ, when you follow Christ, there will always be a wonderful life. There will, the life will be full of riches. The life will be full of um, a good health and strength uh, and uh, the, the enjoyment of the world, right? And they even say, you only live once. Might as well enjoy each and every opportunity that is in this world. Yet, let you, you notice this. In first in the first verse alone, it says very clearly where we are bound. No, It says there in 1 
verse, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world. Wow! We are strangers in the world. Our citizenship is not in earth, on earth, but it is in heaven with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! And so many people, even us Christians, even I myself, uh, we tend to forget that Uh, you know, we want, because we want a comfort, we want a good life, we want to have, to have wealth and riches and success. We tend to forget that we don't belong on this earth. We don't. We are strangers on this earth. Even Abraham longed for a city that is in heaven, a heavenly city, amen, which was revealed through the Apostle John in the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. So it says here, Uh, though for a little while uh, we will we may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials we still greatly rejoice oh honestly i've been struggling uh, honestly i've been struggling how to you know connect being greatly being rejoicing and struggling at the same time that is hard yet the apostle peter speaks about that about this quote unquote emotion and and uh, condition in the heart And, and so I believe we have to train ourselves because our mind can easily trick us. So in verse 7, it says, these have come. What? What has come? The trials. These trials, these grief through all kinds of trials have come. Why? So that our faith, our faith, so that our faith, which is of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire. So he's talking about uh, gold being a very strong element, um, earthly element, but, uh, and it's so strong that even if, it, even if you subject it with extreme fire, it does not destroy. It does not get broken. It is refined. It, is, it becomes beautiful and pure. But in the end, it still perishes because when God destroys the earth, He, he destroys everything in earth. That is what Peter is saying na mas valuable itong faith natin. Because our faith is much more precious than gold. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so this, this kind, these trials that we are going through is what? Is a testing of our faith so that our faith may be proved genuine. You know, a lot of times I pray, Lord, Is my faith in you genuine? Is, do I truly trust in you? Do I, even my children, they ask, uh, even my, my daughters, they ask, how, how can I know if I truly love God? How can I know if I truly trust in Him? And I, I, I tell them, if you are struggling, it is, it is a good thing because now you can trust in the Holy Spirit. Now you can trust in God to help you trust in Him. Even in the book of Acts, one of the, one of the persons there uh, was asking, I think one of the di disciples or apostles, he said, um, help me, help me increase my faith to believe. Amen? And so God helps us to believe, to increase our faith. Now, faith is not really for, for God to give us what we want. Faith is there so that we will achieve something. And this is what Peter is saying here. Okay, let me continue. So he says here, These have come so that your faith may be, be, may be proved genuine and what? May result in praise, glory, and honor. May result in glory, praise, and honor. Now there's a, there's a condition here. When Jesus Christ is revealed. Now of course today, when uh, our faith is tested, And somehow, quote-unquote, we pass the test and our faith like seems to be increasing. It is not for us. Yet, it is for Christ. It is for Jesus Christ because now we can see that, oh, God, you are real. You are true in my life. And I glorify you and I praise you and I thank you because of that faith that you have given me. Praise God. And, but it says here, in the end time. This praise, glory, and honor belongs to Jesus Christ in the end time. Uh, I believe it's this. It's because, it's because in the end times, right in the end times, there's a big difference. Today, when we praise God, everybody will just look at us and, you know, they will, uh, with or without people, 
with or without people looking at us, we, we are able to praise God and give Him glory and honor. But in the end times, in the, in the day that Christ comes, okay, everybody will see it. Everybody, those who are believers, those who are in Christ, will glorify and praise God. And those who are not of God, those who are evildoers, those who are liars, those who are not in Christ, who will not be saved, they will see us too. And because the evil will be destroyed or the evil will witness this glory and praise and honor unto Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ's name is glorified and magnified and lifted up even more. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so let me, let me try now to uh, uh, finish in the end last two verses. So listen to this. In verse 8, it says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. That's faith. We have never seen Jesus Christ. We have never seen Jesus Christ because we're, we were not born in the year where he was born. Right? And, but we love him. When, when I sleep, I say, Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you. It's like saying it to someone you truly love. And it is real. But it is difficult to, for people to understand, to say, why are you loving someone that you have never seen? You don't even know the face of that person. Amen? But we, as Christians, because of faith, we love Jesus Christ because we learn, get to learn Jesus Christ through His Word. Hallelujah. And so, um, it says there, uh, next it said, and even though you do not see him now, we still don't see him now because he has not yet come. He says, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. I told my wife, I struggle with this. How can I feel this? How can, feel, how can, I, how can I have this inexpressible and glorious joy? Um, uh, that, uh, because I believe in him even though I don't see him. And uh, going through trials and troubles, yet you know, right now as I say this, I, I have this, this, I have this emotional welling up in my heart, that I am really feeling uh, God's presence and joy in my life. Praise God, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord that it is God's word that uplifts us and helps us through trials and struggles. Praise the Lord. Now let me end. Let us end, no? In verse nine it says. And this is, this is our wonderful punchline. No? For you are receiving. For you and I are receiving the what? The goal of your faith. There is a goal to our faith. There is a goal to our faith. The world's goal to faith is tiwala lang. Diba? Kaya yan. Or have faith, bro. You will receive it. Sabi nila, bro, Diba? When you ask, you shall receive. So, hingin mo yung bahay na maganda. Hingin mo yung coaching na maganda. Humingi ka ng girlfriend na mabait at Christian. No, that is not the kind of faith that the Peter is describing here. Peter is describing what we will receive. What is the goal of our faith? And the goal of our faith is this. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Our faith in God, the purpose of our faith in God is not to have wealth, it's not to have prosperity, good health. Yes, He will give us good health if He wants us to be healed. And we've seen that time and time again when we ask for help from the Lord uh, to, to, to save us and protect us. He does that. Yet the end goal of our faith is not those worldly things or it's not the earthly things. It is salvation of our souls. I hope you're blessed. I do hope you're blessed as we studied God's word this morning. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time that you reminded us that though we are going through struggles and trials and troubles, Lord God, in this world, that these things, this grief through a lot of, of, through different kinds of trials, are there to test the genuineness of our faith. And that this faith becomes stronger and stronger, and it will result in glory and honor and praise unto your name, Jesus Christ, when you come. 
And the end goal of our faith is not to receive worldly wealth, though you can give it to us. It's not to receive um, good health or even healing, though you can give it to us. The end goal, however, thank you for reminding us, is the salvation of our very souls, that we may live with you forever and ever for your glory alone. And we thank you so much for this wonderful message. We receive it and we put it in our hearts. For your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. And I do hope to see you once again next Friday.